Guess the weight. Jake was buying veggies for his lunch recipe. He purchased a bag of carrots when a shady man approached him and told him, Sir, I don't have any money with me, but I really need those carrots. Let's make a deal. If I write your carrots exact weight on this paper, you'll have to give them to me. If I don't, I'll give you my watch. Jake agreed, thinking there was too small a chance for the stranger to guess the number correctly. The mysterious guy scribbled something on the paper and gave it to Jake. As soon as Jake read it, he handed him the bag of carrots. What did the man write on the paper? Your carrots exact weight, just like he said he would. <laughs> Will he win the game? Mark was visiting a new game store in his neighborhood. That day, staff members were giving away free games if the customers answered their questions correctly. Mark got in the queue and waited anxiously to see if he'd get the board game he wanted. When his turn arrived, the staff member said, What has six faces but doesn't wear makeup? has 21 eyes but can't see. Mark was relieved when he heard the riddle, and as soon as he answered, he got the game. What was his reply? A dice. The Indivisible Apples Sam went apple picking with his sister, and on the way back, they met their four cousins. There were only five apples in the basket, and Sam had to divide them equally between his sister and their cousins. But one apple had to remain in the basket that he'd take home. How would he divide the apples? He'd give four apples to his four cousins, leaving one apple in the basket for his sister, and walk home with her. The New Retail Store John's friend Susie opened a new retail store, and she came up with a new method to price her stock. A tie costs $15, a belt $20, a beret $25, and a blazer $30. Using this method, how much would a handbag cost? Thirty-five bucks. She's charging five dollars for each letter you need to spell a clothing item. The Apple Tree Simon won the title for being the smartest person in his town. One day, he woke up in an evil scientist's basement – oh, who would have thought – who wanted to prove that Simon was cheating at each test. So he broadcasted the event live on social media to prove his point. He said, all right, Simon, I'll ask you a simple math question. A farmer in California has an apple tree in his backyard and supplies the fruit from the tree to a local grocery store. On Sunday, the store owner called the farmer to see how much fruit he'll deliver on Monday. The farmer knows that the main trunk has 26 branches. Each branch has exactly 15 bows, each bow 8 twigs, and each twig 1 fruit. How many oranges will the farmer deliver? Simon immediately gave the correct reply. Can you? None, said Simon. Apple trees don't bear oranges. Well. When partying goes wrong. Mason, Jacob, Susie, and Edward were having a party at Edward's place. The next day, Edward was found unconscious, and none of the three friends knew what happened to him. When the police showed up, they found a note next to Edward's calendar. It read, 3 4 9 10 11. Immediately, the detective knew who did it. What about you? It was Mason. The note was next to a calendar. Take the first letters, transform them into months, and you get Mason. 3 equals March, 4 equals April, 9 equals September, 10 equals October, 11 equals… hmm, which one is that? Where's Mary? 
Sarah and Jamie were spending the weekend at Mary's house. On Saturday, they went to bed late, and when they woke up the next day, Mary was gone. She left a note on her nightstand that read, Come find me here. Noon dash DL. What does the note point to? A city? A famous mountain? A forest? Or an island? A city. If you unscramble the letters, it reads London. The right door. Mike was driving for 7 hours on the freeway when his tire blew up. He called for help, and they said it will cost him $200 to fix it. He was angry because he was thirsty, hungry, and didn't have any money. In front of him, still sitting in the car, three doors appeared, each with signs above showing where they lead. The first is full of food. Burgers, spaghetti, lobsters, and pizza. Mm. The second is topped with beverages, from energy drinks to sodas and iced teas. The third door has a million dollars in cash. Which door should Mike open first? His car door. <laughs> Who took the car? Mr. Ronald returned home from his three-week vacation only to find his car missing. He left three of his employees at work to take care of the house, but none of them were there when he returned. To catch them off guard, Mr. Ronald video called each one. Sean said he was on the bus back home after a long night out. George said he was heading to school for his lecture, but he could pop by to help him find his car. Chris said he had just arrived at his hotel room in Italy and had no idea what happened with the vehicle. Right away, Mr. Ronald knew who was lying. It was Chris. The clock behind him showed the exact same time as the one on his phone. He wasn't in Italy. The correct path. Luke was hiking in the mountains for two days when he got lost. He came across two paths. One leads to a nearby town, and the other one will get him lost forever. There are two twin girls there who know which way leads to the town. Luke can only ask them one question, but there's a catch. One of the girls always lies, and the other always tells the truth. And Luke doesn't know which one will be truthful. 25 minutes later, Luke arrived at the nearby town. What did he ask the girls? If I ask your sister for the correct path, which one would she show me? They'll both point in the same direction, which means Luke took the path they didn't point at. Where's he hiding? Jim escaped from prison on Saturday. The police had been patrolling the town he was last seen in until they got a tip. A neighbor saw him entering one of these three houses, but he couldn't remember which one. The police took a closer look at the houses and arrested him. How did they find out the correct house? It's the last one on the right. The car is facing the road a common technique people on the run use to get away without losing time. Where does she live? Mia left her mother's home because they had a big argument. Her mother wanted to know where her daughter was going. But when she got back home from work on Tuesday, Mia was still missing. Mia didn't have a phone, and her mom didn't know where she went. Two hours later, she found out where she was staying. How? She dialed the last number on the phone and told the person on the other side that they'd won the lottery. She told them they needed their name and address to give them the prize. Which is the correct door? Shane is an archaeologist who snuck into some underground caves in Egypt. When the guards spotted him, they started chasing him. He ran fast and came across, ooh, guess what, three doors! Behind the first one were four aggressive crocodiles. Behind the second was an explosive device that would go off in 5 minutes. 
and behind the third was a dirty pond filled with bacteria and parasites. Which door should he pick? The second door. But because the guards were coming quickly, he should move the device to the room with the crocodiles and then run away to avoid being caught. The Lost Suitcase Jenna and Neil got back from their holidays in Hawaii. Upon returning, they discovered that their suitcase never made it into the baggage claim area. It was either lost or taken by somebody. The briefcase had a lock on it. When airport security showed up, they questioned three people with some convincing alibis. The steward said he checked the plane and couldn't find any luggage. The captain said the suitcase was probably forgotten in Hawaii, but nobody would open it because it was locked. The airport security guard said he just called the airport in Hawaii, and nobody knew what happened. Immediately, the police arrested the captain. Why? He knew the suitcase was locked, but nobody told him that. The break-in Susan's apartment was broken into the day before Halloween. When she went home from work and saw the mess, she called the police. The door didn't have any signs of a break-in, just an open window. The detectives questioned three of her neighbors. Mrs. Ruth was knitting a pair of gloves for her great-granddaughter. Michael said he was working a 14-hour shift the day before, and he was sleeping all day. Dennis said he had broken his leg and didn't leave his home for three weeks. The police immediately knew who was guilty. It was Michael. He was the only one able to climb into a window. Wait a minute, you don't think Granny could do that? You should see her doing burpees. Hmm. Edward and Stan are best friends. Edward lives with his wife, Leah, and Stan lives alone. Can you spot Stan's house? There's a love note on the fridge in the right kitchen. Therefore, Stan lives in the left one. Edward is furious because Leah cleaned his home office without permission. Can you spot five changes? Here they are. A lot of neighbors gather for Edward's garage sale. One of them is a robot. Can you guess who? This gentleman. Stan is visiting a food court and finds two similar bakeries. Can you spot five differences between them? Over here. What about these burger places? Can you find 10 differences? Here they are. Can you spot a mistake in this menu? Tuna isn't an ice cream. What about this coffee menu? Any mistakes? Free toppings have a price. Stan works in an agency that holds super secret investigations. They're looking for people with superpowers all over the planet. One day, an anonymous user broke into their corporate system where all the data was stored. Stan finds three suspects who are capable of such crimes and interrogates them. He asks only one question. What did you manage to find out when you stole the data? Billy says, 
I haven't done this kind of crime for 15 years. I don't want to go back to prison. Anna says, I was going to steal your data, but I changed my mind. You didn't have any valuable information. Nobody will believe in superheroes. And Liam replies, Bruh, if I committed such a crime, I would have covered all traces. Who's lying? Anna, she couldn't have learned the secret information without breaking into their system. Stan is visiting a fashion show. He received a clue that one of these models can be a robot. Can you guess who? The second lady, she has a USB outlet on her neck. The robot model, Nina, is very famous, and nobody knows that she's not human. Stan invites her to his office. Nina confesses, I arrived from another planet to study human behavior. Unfortunately, someone recorded their secret interrogation and posted it online. Only four people were in the office at that moment. Stan questions them. Ryan, the cleaner, says, I was vacuuming the fifth floor and couldn't hear anything. Mia, the manager, says, I'm a huge fan of Nina, even though she's not a human. I would never set her up like that. And the guard, Billy, says, I didn't hear your conversation. I was watching a football match in my headphones. Who's lying? Ryan, their office is a four-story building. Nina invites Stan over for dinner. She lives in a big, circular house with a maid, a butler, and a gardener. Nina goes to her room to change. Suddenly, Stan hears her scream and runs to her. Oh no, someone broke into my safe and stole my diamond necklace. Stan interrogates the staff. The butler says he was organizing the library. The maid says that she was dusting the corners. And the gardener says she was watering the roses. Who is lying? The maid. She was dusting the corners, but Nina lives in a circular house. So there are no corners. Stan invites Nina to a fancy restaurant to refute rumors that she's a robot. Can you spot any mistakes in this menu? They confused pomegranate with meat. Stan leaves the table to wash his hands and returns in two minutes. Can you spot five changes? Here they are. Nina slips and falls on the floor. Now she needs to replace a broken fragment in her body as soon as possible. Stan takes her to a secret lab. They need to enter a three-digit code to open the door. He starts looking for clues and notices some tips written on the wall. But the last digit is erased. Can you help them crack the password? The digits indicate the points of intersections of the lines. So the last digit is four. They open the door and enter a spacious hallway. A note on the wall says, Lab is behind the purple door. Can you help the guys find the purple door? The first door is wooden but it has an inscription and an arrow indicating that the purple door is on the right. The second door is painted blue and red, so it doesn't fit. Let's take a closer look at the third door. There is purple color under the layer of yellow paint, so the guys choose this door. Nina throws a party at her house and invites Stan. He receives an anonymous message. There's a werewolf among the guests. Can you find this person?
the first lady is wearing very long nails, and the second guy has a heavy beard. But it doesn't prove anything. But let's take a look at the third lady. She's trying to hide her shiny yellow wolf eyes under her fancy sunglasses. In the kitchen, Stan meets three chefs preparing delicious meals. One of them is a criminal. Can you guess who? The third lady. She's adding glass fragments to the food. Stan calls the police and they arrest the third chef. She confesses that one of the guests, John, bribed her. He asked her to put glass in Stan's plate, but there are three Johns at the party. The officer asks one of them just one question. How do you know Stan? John 1 says, I'm a billionaire and I don't do interrogations without my lawyer. John 2 says, I came here to see Nina because she's my crush. I've never seen Stan before. And John 3 says, Stan and I went to the same college. I haven't seen him for many years, but today we met by chance. Who's lying? John 1. He's wearing a fake Gucci sweater. It's unlikely that he's a billionaire. The next day, Stan wakes up in a dusty basement. A creepy voice says that Stan can pass through one of these three doors. Behind the first door, there's a tank with crocodiles. Jungles full of wild animals are hiding behind the second door. And there's a giant blue whale behind the third door. It can easily swallow an adult human. Which door is more or less safe? Stan should pick the third door. Whales can't survive without water. Therefore, it's not a threat. Stan returns to his office and finds out that someone has stolen the most expensive superhero costume from the lab. Only three people knew about this artifact and had a key. Mia, Billy, and Rose. Stan questions everyone. Mia says, I was feeling sick yesterday, so I went home. Billy says, I locked the office at 10 p.m. and carried my key with me. And Rose says, I carried out technical testing of the suit in the afternoon. After that, I locked it up and left. Who stole the costumes? <laughs> Mia, she's wearing a superhero costume under her clothes. Stan offers Mia a deal. If I write your exact weight on a piece of paper, you'll give the costume back. Mia agrees and gives Stan a piece of paper and a pen. In a minute, she returns the costume. How did Stan do it? Stan literally did what he said. He wrote the phrase, your exact weight, on the paper. Stan needs to find new investors for his agency. That's why he's meeting three people, and each offers Stan a deal. Mallory says, I used to have unique superpowers when I was little, but I didn't develop them. Now I'm old and rich, and I want to invest in your lab to help people like me. Cherry says, My parents left me billions of dollars. I want to invest in progressive projects. And Alfred says, Look, I can help you develop your agency, but I want to have a controlling stake and hire my own staff. One of them is a liar. Can you guess who? Take a closer look at Mallory's hand. She's a robot. Therefore, her story is a lie because robots don't age. Are you ready for a new detective journey? Then buckle your seatbelts and let's go. Mary was walking through the park when she spotted a hungry kitten. The woman decided to share her snack with the animal. Unfortunately, there was a stream between her and the kitty. She squatted down to attract the cat's attention and showed it the food. The animal was next to her in no time. 
There was no bridge over the stream and still, the cat wasn't wet. How is it possible? It happened in the winter and the stream was frozen. In a lake, there is a patch of lily pads. Every day, the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake, how long will it take for the patch to cover half the lake? The patch doubles in size every day. So on the 47th day, the patch will be half the size it is on the 48th day. You are in a place called Bobby's World, and there is only one law there. There is a mirror, but no reflection. There is pizza with cheese, but not with ham. There is pepper, but no salt. There is a door, yet no entrance or exit. What is the law in this strange world? Everything in Bobby's world must contain double letters in its name. Kenneth was hungry. Oh my God. He found a nice diner that served burgers and bought one. After a waiter brought him his order, Kenneth went to the bathroom to wash his hands. But when he came back, his burger was gone. The guy looked around the diner and understood who had taken his lunch. Hmm. Can you figure it out? It's the young woman with a dog sitting at her feet and sniffing the air. If she was just drinking coffee, which is what she's pretending to do, the dog wouldn't be so interested in her. Look at these two guys. One is big and burly, and the other is short and thin. They're in a cafe, drinking identical drinks. The shorter one gulps his drink down in one go and leaves. The other man sips his drink slowly. Then he falls to the floor and is taken to a hospital. Can you explain why it happened if they had the same drinks? The drinks contained poisoned ice cubes. The man who enjoyed his drink gave these ice cubes time to melt and release the poison, while the other man didn't. An Arab sheikh told his two sons that they had to race their camels to a distant city to see who would inherit his fortune. The one whose camel arrived last would win. After wandering aimlessly for days, the brothers asked a wise man for advice. After listening to his opinion, they jumped on the camels and raced as fast as they could to their destination. What did the man tell them? The wise man told them to switch their camels. Look at these two guys. They're wearing similar clothes, yeah. both holding coffee cups, mm. and in general, seem to be perfectly okay. But one of them is a werewolf in disguise. Which one? Look at the guy on the right. There are strange marks on the rim of his cup. Were they left by his fangs? Also, his pupils are a bit elongated. Oh. And there is a paw print design on the plastic bag he's holding. Is it a special store for werewolves? A rich entrepreneur disappeared from his office. Oh the only thing he left behind was a note with the numbers 6, 4, 9, 10, and 11, and a calendar. The police have five suspects. All of them, the businessman's acquaintances. James, Kevin, Carol, Jason, and Laura. Who knows something about the man's disappearance? Oh. Jason. The numbers mean months of the year, and the first letters of these months make up his name, J-A-S-O-N. A furious traveler at the airport claimed the contents of his baggage had disappeared. When I got my suitcase, it was empty. I want you to compensate for what I've lost. After checking the passenger's info, airport security found out that he had indeed left London with a heavy suitcase, and now his bag was empty and a bit wet. The whole situation was suspicious. Can you figure out what happened? The passenger left London with a suitcase full of ice. During the flight, the ice melted, and the man demanded compensation for the lost belongings. Matthew bought a new smartphone and a phone case. 
He paid $510. The gadget cost $500 more than the case. How much did Matthew pay for the phone? He paid $505. Last night, on a full moon, several people disappeared in the city. Locals believe that the kidnapper was a werewolf, and you are invited to investigate this case. There are three suspects, Jack, Levi, and Luke, but all of them have alibis. Jack was walking with his girlfriend near the river. Levi was choosing a silver ring for himself in the mall. And Luke, who is a museum guard, had a night shift at work. Which guy is guilty? Jack was walking under a full moon and didn't turn into a werewolf. Levi wasn't afraid to put on silver rings. The werewolf and potential kidnapper is Luke. Detective Black's assistant, Josh, was late for work. Oh. When he arrived, he told his boss the following story. I was driving along the highway when I saw an unconscious man lying on the left side of the road. I picked him up and took him to the nearest hospital. Finally, he came to his senses. He told me he had been pushed out of a moving vehicle. But the bag with all his money and documents was left inside. Strangely, Detective Black told Josh that the man had lied to him. How did he figure it out? If the man had indeed been pushed out of the car, he would have been lying on the right side of the road, not the left one. Criminals caught three men and locked them in a basement with only one window, high above the floor. Oh, no. The men decided that at least one of them needed to escape and warn the police. The men stood on each other's shoulders, but the one on the top still couldn't reach the window. But then they did something, and one of them managed to escape. Can you figure out what they did? tallest of them climbed on the top. And since, proportionally, this man also had longer arms, he managed to reach the window. You find yourself in a room with no windows. There are three doors leading out of the room. Suddenly, a big screen on the wall lights up. You read, Behind each of these doors, there is some danger. The first door leads to a scorching hot desert. Several steps, and the sun will burn you. Behind the second door, there is a hungry alligator that hasn't eaten for a year. And the third door hides a pool with icy water. To get to freedom, you'll have to swim across it. Which door should you choose to survive? Alligators can indeed go without food for up to three years, which means that the creature behind the second door is hungry and dangerous. Freezing water can cause cold shock in an unprepared swimmer. That's why you should choose the first door. You just need to wait for the sun to go down and walk through the desert. Oh, yes. James came to a cafe to drink coffee. Mm. But when a waitress brought him a cup, the man found a fly in his drink. He called the waitress and told her to bring him another coffee. Please. She did. But when James took a sip from his cup, he got really angry and asked to call a manager. He complained that the waitress had brought him the same coffee. How did he understand it? The new coffee was already sweet because James had already put sugar in his first cup before finding the fly. Hmm, Hazel is a rock climber. She's packing bags for an expedition to Everest. Can you spot any extra items in her suitcase? It's unlikely that you would need these fancy high-heeled shoes in the mountains. Also, this fragile vase is useless on a hike. Hazel orders a taxi to go to the airport. She's using this app. There are four free cars in her neighborhood, but only one of them can reach Hazel's home. Can you tell which one? It's the third car. Hazel arrives at the airport she takes a closer look at her ticket and faints. Can you guess why?
the name of the airport on the ticket doesn't match the airport that she's in. Hazel needs to go to the correct airport as quickly as possible. These two drivers are eager to give her a ride. Can you tell who will reach the destination faster? Although the second car looks more expensive and chic, it has a flat tire. Therefore, Hazel should choose the first driver. Finally, Hazel boards her flight. She falls asleep right away. She wakes up in a while and realizes that someone has stolen her phone. Hazel questions three suspects. Bill says, I've been watching a movie within the last hour. I didn't look around. Sorry. Kyle says, I was sleeping too until you woke me up. And Sheila says, I'm afraid of flying, so I listen to soothing music with my eyes closed. Can you guess who stole Hazel's phone? Nobody. She just dropped it on the floor over here. See? It's dinner time. Kyle offers Hazel his dessert if she succeeds in guessing the date of his birth. Here's a hint. The day before yesterday, Kyle was 22. And next year, Kyle will be 25. Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? Today is the 1st of January, and Kyle's birthday was on the 31st of December. Therefore, Kyle was 22 on December 30th. Then he turned 23 on December 31st. This year, he will turn 24. And the next year, 25. Finally, Hazel lands in Nepal. She enters the baggage claim area and sees three odd things right away. Can you see them too? There's a dog in this bag. Animals don't come with regular luggage. This baggage cart lacks all wheels and floats in the air. And these boats are parked outside the window along with the planes. Hazel arrives at the meeting point for climbers at the local restaurant. But there's no one there. The cleaning lady says, I was busy cleaning the toilet and just got back. I didn't see anyone. The guard says, oh yeah, the meeting has been delayed for tomorrow, that's for sure. And the waiter says, I've been here all the time, and I haven't noticed any crowds of tourists. Who's lying? The guard. See this sign? The meeting takes place on the roof. That's why they didn't see the tourists. On the way to the roof, Hazel sees a woman who's cleaning a window on the 10th floor. Suddenly, she slips and falls. She doesn't have any safety equipment and nothing to soften her fall. But yet, she's not hurt. How can this be? The woman was cleaning the window inside the building. <laughs> Finally, Hazel meets her group of climbers. But one of these people is an imposter. Can you guess who? This guy has tentacles instead of a hand. He's definitely not from this planet. Hazel goes on an expedition with the group. She stops to take some pictures and gets lost. In a while, Hazel finds three roads leading to the next mountain village. But every path hides some adventure. There's a hungry snow leopard walking on the first path. There's a herd of Himalayan yaks on the second path. And road 3 leads through an avalanche risk area. Any movement can make the snow slide down. Which way is more or less safe? Hazel should choose the second path. Although these yaks look pretty scary, in fact, they're friendly plant eaters. Hazel checks into the local hostel. 
She leaves her bags in the room and goes to see the sights of the village. After a while, she returns and finds out that someone had stolen her passport. Hazel calls the sheriff, and he interrogates four suspects. The hotel manager says, I was dealing with a tourist group that has just arrived. I didn't notice any robbers. The hostel owner says, I was dealing with a bathroom clog all day. The gardener says, I didn't enter the hostel. I was watering the roses in the garden. And the cleaner says, I was too busy feeding fish in the lobby. I didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The cleaner. Can you see any aquariums in the lobby? Hazel visits the local restaurant. The cook offers her three meals to choose from. Can you help her pick the safest option? There's a worm in these instant noodles, and there are too many flies around this rice. It's probably not very fresh. So, Hazel should choose this sandwich. In the village, Hazel meets the local guide, Luke. He offers to show Hazel the shortest way to the top. But first, Hazel has to solve his riddle. Luke and his wife have seven children. Half of them are sons. How is this possible? Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? They are all sons. Luke and Hazel begin the trip. On the way, he offers Hazel to visit the local magic caves. Hazel agrees, but eventually she gets lost inside one of the caves. She wanders around for a while and finds these three tunnels. There's a portal to the sun in the first tunnel. There's a box with an ancient magic gemstone inside the second tunnel. This gemstone curses anyone who sees it. And finally, the third tunnel hides a bunch of poisonous scorpions. Which way should Hazel choose to survive? The second one. The gemstone is locked in the box, so Hazel should just walk by it. Hazel needs to cross this toxic swamp to continue her trip. The only way to do so is to jump from one block to another. Can you help her choose the last stone wisely? Each block has a particular number – 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, and 21. This sequence is formed by adding the number 4. Therefore, the remaining block should be 25, not 27. Hazel continues her journey and finds this weird sign engraved on a rock. Can you help her crack the meaning of this code? The arrow is pointing to the right. The message is mirrored. If the P.O.T. is on the right, It means that the T-O-P, or top, is on the left. Now Hazel knows the right direction. It's getting really cloudy. It'll rain soon. Hazel decides to hide in one of these three caves and have some lunch. Can you help her pick the safest place to stay? Take a look at the track. The first cave is probably home to a family of bears. Mother bears can get furious when it comes to their cub protection. As for the second cave, it's obvious that a human being has entered it and come back out, which is encouraging. And now, let's take a look at the third cave. A human entered it but never came out. Therefore, Hazel should choose the second cave. Finally, Hazel reaches the top of the mountain. Suddenly, a kind wizard pops out of nowhere and greets her. He suggests Hazel relocate to a hidden magic world. He says, I'll show you the gates if you solve my riddle. So listen carefully, I'm very fragile, and even just saying my name could break me. What am I? Any ideas what it might be?
The correct answer is silence. The wizard chose Hazel the gates. There are three doors, but only one of them leads to the magic world. Can you help Hazel figure this out? Only the second path leads to the final destination. Bye-bye!